Whenever you are making games, it is important to understand that things need to be highly customizable. And why is that? You may write a lot of code for making a character to move, for, uh, for it to jump, for it to shoot, but at certain points, you have to be very quick about how you change things, okay? Because making games is a, a, a thing that requires a lot of creativity and a lot of experimentation. So while the game is running, you need to be able to adjust variables, to adjust the settings for the player and for the enemies for the entire game, and then adjust that. And for example, you might have a team where you have a game designer or you have uh, fellow artists, programmers, sound designers, and they might want to change some settings. So a good thing about Unity is that you can easily make things customizable. And we're going to learn how to do this in the next lessons. But the first thing that we want to check is to select the FPS controller in the hierarchy and look at the inspector. So we have several components here, like transform, character controller, but the important one that we want to check is the first person controller script. You're going to see there are lots of fields here. We have checkboxes, we have text fields, we have some uh, knobs that we can drag and change that here, jump speed, gravity multiplier. So there are lots of things here that we can use and that we can customize. Okay, so for example, if you press the play button right now, you are now running the game. What you can do is you can change these variables to experiment, to try new things. So maybe the walking speed for your game might be too quick and you can change that from 5 to 3. And the run speed shouldn't be 10, maybe 6. You can just get here, change these numbers and if you walk now, you're going to walk slower than before. If walk speed was set to 10, for example, then the player would walk really, really fast. Okay, you can see that uh, it's moving up and down very quickly because, well, it's moving very quickly. Okay, so let me go back here to 5 and 10. Uh, you shouldn't use this as walking setting right now. Okay, it's basically when you hold shift, then that checkbox disappears. So that's something uh, that is dynamic. You don't need to change that. And we also have other settings. Let's see some of them some of the most important ones. We have walk speed, run speed, we have the run speed lengthen, that's okay. And we also have the jump speed. That is, for example, if you choose 20 here and you jump, you're going to jump much higher than before. So that could be thought as the, the impact of your, your jump, okay, of your legs, how strong you're going to, to perform a jump. And we have the gravity multiplier. This one is, is pretty interesting. If you choose 10 here, and we jump, we we'll barely leave the floor because the gravity is going to be very strong. But if we change it to one, for example, and we press space, it's going to feel like we are in the moon. So why do we have this gravity multiplier? It's basically how the, the these variables were set here. The, the default vari variable for the gravity, so you might want to check this. If you go to edit, project settings, and then you go to physics, you can see that the gravity is set to minus 9.81. Okay, so that's the, the real value for the gravity. We, that actually happens in the real world. But when you're playing a game, sometimes you don't want realism to be all over it because that is going to make your, your game not entirely fun. So for example, if we were to jump like this with the gravity multiplier one, uh, it wouldn't be very good, uh, except if we were in the moon or in another planet. So maybe if you're making a space game, that would be interesting. But if we use gravity multiplier as one, then we would have to reduce the jump speed. Okay, so if you jump, it's going to look like this. However, you see, we still have a lot of air time by doing this jump. Okay, we okay, we, we jump and then we return quickly to the floor, but that's not realistic at all. Okay, we, we're very, uh, that very small, very slow movement. So that's why we have to play with two things, the jump speed and the gravity multiplier. And the value that we have here, by default for jumping, is pretty much the phone on every, every, every first person shooter game you play. Either it's in a mobile phone, it's in a, a, a video game, okay? It's pretty much, it, it feels like that almost every time. Okay, so that's why we have this gravity multiplier. Now, if you go to mouse look, this is going to be, there are going to be a few settings here. So the most basic of them is the sensitivity. It's, if you played old first person shooters, you might remember that you can set these things in the console, okay? Right now it's set to two 
on x and y and we're moving like this. I'm moving my mouse around looking to the left and to the right. If I change that to 5 on both of them then it's going to be much more sensitive. I'm moving the mouse very uh, in a very short length and uh, we are turning our heads very quickly here. Okay, So that's something that you might even want to allow your players to change later in a settings screen. Okay, But I'm going to leave it at 2. Now, we also have here clamp vertical rotation. This one is very interesting. Okay, So, if you're playing a first-person shooter game, it is very usual for, for you to be able to look down all the way and to look up all the way as well. Okay, If you are making a first-person shooter game where you are a turret or if you are on a weapon, you might want to change this setting. Okay, So, you ensure that this is checked and you might define the minimum x and the maximum x. This is the rotation, is how low or how high we can look. So if we change that to minus 20 and 20, for example, if I look up, there is a vertical limit. So right now I'm moving my mouse upwards, but we can't look up all the way. If I move the mouse down, same thing applies. I can't look directly uh, well, 90 degrees down. I can't look to the floor, but there, there is that limit here. That's interesting if you are uh, holding a turret. And there also, well, another interesting thing is we have the smooth setting. If you mark this checkbox and you look around, okay, so if you move your mouse, then Unity is going to ensure that that movement, that look movement, is going to be very smooth. It's going to slowly change from one target, from one the one place you were looking before, to the place you were looking. So again, this is interesting for turrets. Since turrets are might be very strong weapons, you might use uh, low values for the smooth time. So it takes time for you to aim at an enemy that's coming at you. Uh, on the other hand, well, if you aim correctly and you shoot, you're going to destroy that, en that enemy very quickly. Okay, so let me just restart the scene to reset these settings and that's important okay if you are in the play mode and you change these settings and you stop the game from running right now all of the settings are going to be reset to to how they were before you pressed the play button in unity so what you want to do is you want to tune your things tune these values here tune all of these fields and write down the numbers that you think are going to work well so you stop the scene uh, then set them and move forward and another one that's in interesting to to see is the head bob Okay. By default in Unity, that uh, head bob is set as active. Okay, So if you look, you're going to have that movement as you are walking or as you are running. Okay, it's, it's the natural movement of your head. It moves up and down vertically. But for some players, that might be uh, nausea, that might induce some nausea at some players. So you might want to disable that feature completely. So you can just click on this checkbox. And if you walk, there is no head bob at all. Okay, that's common. And however, if you want to use the head bob, you can change its settings here. Okay, there's the horizontal, the vertical range, and well, some other settings here that you might want to change. Okay, and the same applies for the jump bob. If you jump and you land, you notice that there's a little vibration. Okay, if you change this bob amount to one, for example, you can see that more clearly. So if you land, there is that little uh, kick back okay when you land it's like you're landing on your feet and your knees they bend a little bit for you to land safely okay it's something very natural well I'm showing you that just to, to, to give you the the idea that you can change and that you can customize things okay and once you make your scripts which we're going to do very shortly we want to make sure it's highly customizable like this one here so you can change things very very quickly and I'm going to leave the default values here because they work very well for me. I think they're well, basically okay. But feel free to, to pause this video right now to, to stop the course a little bit and change to the values that you think are going to be comfortable for you.